Here's a close-up of my original compact collinear. This uses a uh, four-hole panel mount end connector on a three-quarter inch PVC pipe end cap. The pipe opens up and you can see the actual innards of the antenna. It is nothing more than a length of, I believe, 14 gauge copper wire. Uh, this is half wavelength down here from the base to the first coil, yep, from the base to the first coil right here. Then this is three-quarter wavelength and this is slightly less than three-quarter wavelength. Um, the actual calculations aren't too imperative. This is a very forgiving antenna. So it really doesn't matter if you're off. Just try not to be off more than like a millimeter or two. I know that's a little crazy, but you know, you're dealing with very high frequencies, so you know, it's not as forgiving as the lower frequencies. Now, as for parts, like I've stated, we have a typical four panel uh, mount end jack. Um, I'm not too fond of these, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't like how it mounted to the pipe, so instead um, today we're going to be using a bulkhead panel mount. As you can see, the difference is that there's this nut on the outside right here, and then that just kind of screws on, nut and bolt style. And that's actually going to be affixed to the bottom of a one quarter inch diameter because it just so happens that the uh, the coils in the um, in the compact collinear are exactly the outer diameter of a one quarter inch piece of PVC plumbing pipe right here. Now, as for a uh, wire, regular copper wire doesn't matter. You can get really thin stuff. It doesn't matter. Wi-Fi is relatively low power, so it's only about at maximum 300 milliwatts, but most adapters really operate closer to 150. Uh, typical tools, we got a couple of pliers, we got some solder desoldering braid, got some wire, got some cutters, uh, got a soldering gun in this case because I'm using such, uh, such thick wire. You can still use a soldering iron. We need a marker, ruler, metric, of course. Um, that's about it when it comes to tools and supplies. Now, I actually got this socket bit. The reason for the socket bit is it actually has a 10 millimeter outer diameter. I've actually taken my, uh, my metric ruler and verified that it is roughly 10, oh, yeah, it's inch, it's roughly 10 millimeters. That way we can use this to actually wrap our wire around to get really nice, solid, smooth, round coils. You don't have to use a socket bit, just go find something in your house that has 10 millimeter outer diameter. I'm sure maybe a marker would work, I've never actually measured, but it looks almost right. You might actually be able to use a marker, a pencil, I'm sure you've got something. So. We're going to take our black Sharpie marker, and we are going to measure the, uh, the half wavelength, which is about 61 millimeters. So wait a minute. Uh, uh, that's right about there. And then, using our pliers and our socket bit, we're going to try to bend this around as closely as possible. Bent around. There we go. Nice, even bend. Try to tighten it up a little bit. If your measurements aren't exact, don't worry about it. Try to keep the coil nice and straight. And then we're going to actually measure off 91 and a half millimeters from this point on this point. Now, if you notice, my wire is a little bent because it's it's literally scrapped out of my lab garbage can. It's really not a big deal. Just try to get it relatively straight. So okay, so from this point on, we're going to measure uh, 91 and a half millimeters, and we're going to put another coil. Keeping in mind, keep the coils in the same direction. Make sure they're either twisting clockwise or counterclockwise. Don't have them oppose each other. That could actually cause problems in the long run. I've got both of the coils put in place, and I've marked off almost 85 millimeters, between 83 and 85 mil. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this scrap off right here. And this is the meat of our antenna. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some needle nose pliers and we're going to bend the appropriate length downward. I've got one here. Try to get these as sharp as possible. If you can't, no big deal. Try to sneak this under here, get a nice sharp twist up, and there's our first coil. Of course, yeah, it's a little bent, but you can go in afterwards and try to get it nice and smooth. Go into the second one, do the same. There we 
we go. Got both of the coils placed. This is going to be the top end. This is going to be the bottom end. And that's the meat of the antenna. Now, I've actually noticed that when it comes to this connector, there's a problem. With the panel mount end, I'll try to get this nice and close up so you can see, this actually fits in nicely. Like, the actual diameter fits in. This is actually, it pushes in. With this connector, however, this actually has a thinner diameter solder cup. So, this is going to be soldered, but it's not going to push in. So, measure this over here, and make sure that the final length, after you solder it, isn't off measurement. Because, like I said, with the previous one, this actually pushes in. Let me see if I can get nice and close for you. It pushes in all the way to the bottom, but for this one, it's going to be resting on the top. So it's actually going to throw this off about three millimeters. So I have to cut this down about three millimeters. Now I'm going to go ahead and readjust my camera, and uh, so we can go and get some some footage of the vice of the desk vice and some soldering. My soldering gun decided to uh, be camera shy today, and it's become nothing more than a mildly searing butt plug. So I'm going to opt out for a typical soldering iron, you know, the average 30 uh, 30 watt soldering iron. Here's a close up of the coils. As you can see, they're nice and uniform, straight with each other, whatever. Our end connector, now this is going to fit in just like so, I'm going to solder it on, but before we do that, we're going to take the actual nut that goes to the connector, we're going to place this on like so. That way, we're going to take the, uh, the, the actual cap of the, um, the PVC, we're going to put that on like so as well. That way when we solder this on, we can feed this right back up into the cap and then bolt it all on. Now, uh, be careful because there's some, some uh, polyethylene or polystyrene or some kind of uh, plastic inside here, some kind of nylon plastic that's actually inside the end connector itself. It really doesn't get along too well with excessive amounts of heat, so try not to um, get it too hot for too long. We're just going to fill the solder cup with a liberal amount of solder, and I'm going to uh, pre-tin the... Um, the actual, I'm going to try to on camera, this isn't easy for me. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and pre-tin this. Get a nice little coat of solder on it because solder sticks well to itself. Then we're just going to take the two of these. We're going to butt them up together. And we're going to force them to join. There we go. Now as you can see, the antenna is nicely affixed. I'm going to wait for the wire to cool down a little bit. And uh, we'll assemble the rest of this. Well, that's cool enough. All right, so I've already drilled a hole. I don't think I have to teach you how to use a drill. You should already know how to do that. We've insert like so. And now it's just a matter of taking some needle nose pliers or something of the such. we got some needle nose pliers. We're going to get that nut into place, or try to. There we go, and then we're just going to twist this on a couple of times. There we go. That's nice and twisted on, nice and sturdy and stable. I'm uh, going to do some last minute you know, adjustments. Looks nice and straight to me. Slip this into the pipe, and there we go. Compact and linear. There we go. We've gone ahead and built a compact collinear. I left the tube a little long because I really don't care to cut it the right size. I really should have cut it about here, but it really shouldn't make any impact on the antenna itself. Now I've got that stone blur running and I'm looking at an access point and I've got the built-in rubber duck antenna. I'm going to go ahead and swap out the rubber duck antenna and we're going to see what kind of performance gain this compact collinear gives us. So I'm going to go with duck behind the computer and swap this out. Let this go for a couple of seconds. You'll notice that the uh, that the access point signal strength has dropped considerably. Now, the reason I'm using the actual PC rather than my laptop is I noticed that PCI Wi-Fi cards actually have faster and more accurate signal performance for some reason. I I don't know why.
There we go. I'll give this thing this a couple of seconds to tune in and see how well it does. If you've already noticed, we're actually picking up way more. I think we've picked up like three or four or five more access points themselves. And we've also got a really nice, thick, steady uh, signal strength. So the antenna is working. Um, a note about the coils themselves. They're trying to get the, the gap between the coils as close together as possible. Uh, make sure they're not too far apart. Um, that will actually affect the gain as well. Yeah, it seems to be working. I mean, it's giving us uh, a bit more performance. It's probably giving us about like six decibel gain, five decibel gain above a stock rubber duck. So there you go. Compact collinear antennas. Definitely worth war driving with.